Okay, so this is going to be a very quick introduction to your They Say, I Say book. So again, this book is called They Say, I Say, The Moves That Matter in Academic Writing. So what is this book about? Um, it's divided into three parts, and part one is figuring out what other people have to say about your topic. So this is, They Say, I Say is all about how to argue and the best ways to form an argument. So before you even start arguing, you need to figure out why is there an argument? What are people saying about whatever topic you've chosen? Once you figure that out, then you'll, you'll look at the information and you'll decide what do you think about this topic? Which side are you on? Who do you agree or disagree with? And then finally, you'll tie it all together. Um, you'll show here's what other people have to say, here is my response to what those other people have to say, and you'll put it all together in your final proposal essay. So the idea behind this book uh, can really be summed up in this quote that comes from the introduction. And so here's this quote, you come late to a party, when you arrive others have long preceded you and they are engaged in a heated discussion. You listen for a while until you've caught the tenor of the argument, then you put in your oar. Someone responds, you answer back. Someone comes to your defense. Another aligns himself against you. The hour grows late and you must depart with the discussion still vigorously in progress. And so the idea behind this is you are not going to be the first person to argue about whatever your topic is. There's going to have been hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of people who've argued about it before. So you don't want to start your essay as if you are the only person to ever talk about this topic. And so you need to know what's been said about the topic already. And then you need to add something to it. What do you have to say that might be new and different and looking at it in a different way than all these people who have come before? And understand that this is just a composition class, and so you're not going to um, be able to talk about everything that's ever been said, but you do want to make sure it's clear that you've done your research, and you do want to respond to things, and you do want to really show that you understand that arguments um, are a compilation, that it's not one person standing on a street corner shouting about something, it's much more like a conversation. So we're going to start um, with they say. Before you even start your argument, you need to know what other people are saying. Um, you also need to understand, like I said before, arguing is a dialogue, not a monologue. So you've got to listen and understand what other people are saying, what the conversation is about this topic before you start saying what you think. So I like to compare this to Double Dutch. I've got this picture over here. Um, so you're standing there, you're watching the ropes move, you're kind of doing that like swaying motion. You've got to get the motion. You can't just go flying in there because then the ropes are going to hit you. It's going to be ruined. You have to kind of watch, you have to feel the rhythm, and then once you've got that, you run in and then you can start jumping up and down and that's your contribution. Um, another image you can think of is if, if you like diving, um, you have to understand when you dive how high you are, how deep the water is, are there rocks below, how do you need to land? So all of these things are before you even jump into something, you need to understand what you're jumping into. So the, the step one and part one of this book has to do with they say. So this is listening to the conversation on your topic, and this is what this paper, the pro and con editorials and the annotated bibliography, is all about, is understanding the conversation about your topic that already has been going on. In the real world, no one argues in a vacuum. Arguments are provoked. People argue because of something someone else has already said. So you want to establish what has already been said before you start talking about what you think. And there's an example in one of the chapters that you're going to read. I think it's the very first chapter, actually, 
um, the Dr. X example. So the writers of They Say, I Say went to this presentation and listened to this guy go on and on and on about how great Dr. X was. And they were sitting in the audience going, well, okay, I get that he's great, but why are you telling us this? And it wasn't until later that the guy doing the presentation said, oh, some people are criticizing Dr. X's work. So you want to start with that. You want to start with, here's why I'm arguing about this uh, particular topic. And in order to do that, you need to know why people are arguing. So that's what you'll do with this first uh, paper, the editorials and the bibliography. After that, the final paper uh, is going to be the proposal. That's when you get to add your opinion. You're actually entering the conversation. So you, at this point, you will already have figured out what's being said, and you'll be metaphorically putting in your or. Um, you'll be then allowed to respond to what other people are saying and talk about who you agree and disagree with. So the they say, the argument that you're responding to, can be a lot of things. Um, something that you've heard someone say, a family member or a friend, uh, an argument you read in a book or an essay or online, a claim made by a public figure or organization, a philosophy that people follow um, in politics or just in life in general. There are a lot of different arguments out there that you can form your argument as a response to. So here are just some, uh, just to show you some examples of they say, again, which is the, what is the argument that's going on, the conversation that's going on, and then your I say, which will be you joining the conversation. So here's a they say, baseball is the best sport in America. So this is something that someone might say. And your I say can be anything, can be whatever you actually believe about this topic. Um, oh, actually, I'll go ahead and do those. So your I say could be, even though baseball doesn't have the action football has, it's, it is still America's greatest pastime. So you might agree with what they say. This is an example of agreement. Let's look at this next example of they say. The acting in that movie was terrible and made the film painful to watch. And so that could just be something someone says on a blog, that is the they say, and now you respond to it. You might say something like, the actors failed to capture the essence of the characters, but the director also failed to guide their performance. So you're both agreeing and disagreeing in this case. You're saying, yes, the acting was bad, but not all the blame lies with the actors. And then here's our last sample they say. I can't believe we can't smoke on campus. If I'm paying to go here, I should be able to do what I want. So that might be something that you hear a friend say or a fellow student. And then you could have whatever response uh, that you feel to this. And here's a sample. I pay to go here too, and I don't want to smell other people's cigarette smoke. Banning smoking on campus was the right thing to do. So this is an example of complete disagreement with what they say. So this is how they say I say works. You figure out, here's something people are saying about this topic, here's my response. And again, for right now, for our editorials, you're just focusing on the they say. So here's some other examples of what they say with the added I say response. You deplore the demonstrations taking place in Birmingham, but your statement, I'm sorry to say, fails to express a similar concern for the conditions that brought about the demonstrations. So um, this is an example from Martin Luther King Jr., letter from a Birmingham jail, where he's using the critics' objections as the they say, and he's building his own argument, the I say, on top of those objections. And this sounds so much better than him just saying, here's what I think, let me tell you about it. No, you gotta start with, here's where the problem is, is happening and then you're going to build what you have to say on top of that. Here's another example. My daughter, who goes to Stuyvesant High School, only blocks from the former World Trade Center, thinks we should fly the American flag out our window. Oop. I don't know why that just happened. All right, let's go back to where we were.
definitely not, I say. The flag stands for vengeance and war. So again, um, here is this author. Um, she's starting with, here's what, her, it's just her daughter. Here's what her daughter has said. And she is responding to her daughter's opinion. And then, you know, this is an entire essay. So here's just the start of her essay that she's disagreeing with her daughter. And then the rest of the essay, she's going to explain why she disagrees. And here's one last example. If ever there was a newspaper headline custom made for Jay Leno's monologue, this was it. Kids taking on McDonald's this week, suing the company for making them fat. Isn't that like middle-aged men suing Porsche for making them get speeding tickets? Whatever happened to personal responsibility? So this is the summarizing of the they say. Um, it's talking about these kids suing McDonald's and it's kind of creatively showing the side of the argument um, where people are saying this is stupid for people to sue McDonald's. So he's kind of summarizing that and then he's adding his own I say. So he says, I tend to sympathize with these portly fast food patrons though. Maybe that's because I used to be one of them. So again, notice how he start in all of our examples, they're starting with saying, here is the argument, here's the conversation, here is what they say about this topic. And then they use that to build their I say. They're building on what other people have had to say so we know what they're arguing about and why. So they say I say this book is meant to help you with academic writing and it's doing what I've already kind of done in the sample papers which is giving you templates and these templates are going to help you take what you would say out loud during a discussion and put it into a written academic formula. And here's an example. In discussion of blank, a controversial issue is whether blank. While some argue that blank, others contend that blank. So what do these templates do? They help you take those ideas that are clear in your head, but often hard to get out on paper in a way that sounds the way that a college paper should sound. And it's going to help you kind of format that argument. So that's what this whole book is about. That's what it's trying to help you do. And we're going to do practice with these templates. And this is the, the most important part of the book is looking at the templates, understanding how you can use them in your own paper and doing some practice with them. Um, so just to show you a few examples uh, for the I say part, here are some example templates. When you agree with the conversation, she argues blank and I agree because blank. And that's pretty simple. Um, but more interesting complex ways to format agreements when in your paper are things like this. His argument that blank is supported by new research showing that blank. So this is another way uh, for you to build your I say in a more sophisticated way where it's not just you saying I believe this because I believe it but where you're looking at the conversation and saying well I found this research that's supporting these arguments. When you disagree, my own view is that blank. Though I can see blank, I still maintain that blank. And so this is an example um, where conceding is a good idea, where you're saying, okay, I recognize that this viewpoint has some problems, however, it's still the best viewpoint. And then you're talking about why. Although some might object that blank, I reply that blank. The, the issue is important because blank. And then doing both, this is the most sophisticated way to do it. He claims that blank, and I have mixed feelings about it. On the one hand, I agree that blank. On the other hand, I still insist that blank. So notice that with all of these templates, the organization is done for you, but you still have to do the critical thinking. You cannot just plug a random sentence in here. The sentence still has to make sense. So you have to carefully think about, okay, what are the claims that uh, this particular author is making? Um, what are the different ways that I feel about this particular argument? So you're the, you still have to do the thinking but the, or, again, the organization, which sometimes is the hardest thing, you know, I have a lot of students who will come to my office and 
I'll look at their paper and I, they'll have written a, a really awkward, garbled kind of sentence and I say, okay, tell me what you meant by this. And out loud they can tell me perfectly, but something gets lost between your brain and the paper. <laughs> and so that's what this book is all about, is helping you take what's in your brain and put it in the paper in a way that makes sense and sounds college level. So we're going to start that right now with your exercise. And this is pretty simple. Uh, I want you to start by looking at the paragraph about vegetarianism that's under exercise one at the end of the introduction chapter. So I didn't make you read the introduction chapter because I just gave you the basics in this slideshow. Um, but this is around page 14 and 15. That's, uh, those are the pages it's on in the second edition. It might be a little different in the first edition, but it, it should be about uh, the same page number, somewhere around there. Um, but there's a paragraph that talks about vegetarianism and the different viewpoints that people have about it and why. So I want you to look at that first as an example. And then I want you to think about possible topics that you might want to write about for these last two papers. So remember, you have to keep the same topic for your editorials and annotated bibliography and then for your proposal. So the topic that you pick now, you're gonna be using for the rest of the semester. So make sure that you, you are interested in, in this topic and that you found some research about it. Um, for right now, just think about possible topics that you might wanna write about and pick one and use it to fill in these blanks and use that vegetarian example as a guide because it's pretty similar to what I want you to do here. So here's your sample templates where I want you to fill in the blanks. And you can handwrite or type this and just write down one, two, three, four, and five on your paper. And then all you have to give me is what you put in that blank. You don't have to rewrite this whole sentence, but fill in those blanks. And here's what you're doing with this. I am interested in writing about the topic blank. So that's number one, because blank. And so for number two, I want you to tell me why. Why are you interested in this topic? Um, and that's why I want you to do some thinking about this. Don't just pick a random topic. You really need to have an interest in it and you need to be able to tell me what your interest in it is. This topic bothers some people because they think blank. So now you wanna think a little bit about um, why are some people against uh, whatever this topic is or or what kind of issues do they have it and so again that's gonna take maybe a little research or maybe just a little bit of critical thinking about what you've heard people say this is the they say part what what are people saying about this topic however these people might be surprised to learn blank so this is where I want you to think about what's something with that topic that people might not have thought about or, or maybe not have been aware of at all. And then finally, if I choose to write about this topic, I will be sure to discuss blank. So again, I want you to have a topic in mind and I want you to be thinking about what are people already saying about it and what are ways that people are maybe misinterpreting it or not being aware of all the facts or you know not looking at it from certain points of view. And so this is going to, again, this is going to require you to do some thinking about this topic and to be able to look at it from several different angles and explain to me what you have to say about this topic, what other people are saying about it and what you have to say about it. So this is your writing exercise. You'll complete this. You'll give this to me the next time I see you in class and we can uh, talk about it a little bit. All right, so that's it for your introduction to They Say, I Say.